An Ode in Time of Hesitation by William Vaughn Moody, after seeing at Boston the statue of Robert Gould Shaw, killed while storming Fort Wagner, July 18, 1863, at the head of the 1st Enlisted Negro Regiment, the 54th Massachusetts. I before the solemn bronze St. Gaudens made to thrill the heedless passer's heart with awe, and set. Here in the city's talk and trade to the good memory of Robert Shaw, this bright March morn I stand, and hear the distant spring come up the land, knowing that what I hear is not unheard of this boy soldier and his negro band, for all their gaze is fixed so stern ahead, for all the fatal rhythm of their tread, the land they died to save from death and shame trembles and waits, hearing the spring's great name, and by her pangs these resolute ghosts are stirred. Two through street and mall the tides of people go heedless, the trees upon the common show no hint of green, but to my listening. Heart the still earth doth impart assurance of her jubilant emprise, and it is clear to my long-searching eyes that love at last has might upon the skies. The ice is runnelled on the little pond, a telltale patter drips from off the trees, the air is touched with southland spiceries, as if but yesterday it tossed the frond of pendant mosses where the live oaks grow beyond Virginia and the Carolines, or had its will among the fruits and vines of aromatic isles asleep beyond Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. Three soon shall the Cape Ann children shout in glee, spying the Arbutus, spring's dear recluse, hill lads at dawn shall hearken the wild goose go honking northward over Tennessee, west from Oswego to Sault Ste. Marie, and on to where the pictured rocks are hung, and yonder where, gigantic, Willful, young, Chicago sitteth at the northwest gates, with restless violent hands and casual tongue molding her mighty fates, the lakes shall robe them in ethereal sheen, and like a larger sea, the vital green of springing wheat shall vastly be outflung over Dakota and the prairie states. By desert people immemorial on Arizonan mesas shall be done dim rites unto the thunder and the sun, nor shall the primal gods lack sacrifice more splendid, when the white Sierras call unto the Rockies straightway to arise and dance before the unveiled ark of the year, sounding their windy cedars as for shams, unrolling rivers clear for flutter of broad phylacteries, while Shasta signals to Alaskan seas that watch old sluggish glaciers downward creep to fling their icebergs thundering from the steep, and Mariposa through the purple calms gazes at far Hawaii crowned with palms where east and west are met, a rich seal on the oceans. Bosom set to say that east and west are twain, with different loss and gain. The Lord hath sundered them. Let them be sundered yet. I ve alas. What sounds are these that come sullenly over the Pacific seas, sounds of ignoble battle, striking dumb the seasons half awakened? Ecstasies? Must I be humble, then, now when my heart hath need of pride? Wild love falls on me from these sculptured men. By loving much the land for which they died I would be justified. My spirit was away on pinions wide to soothe in praise of her its passionate mood and ease it of its ache of gratitude, too sorely heavy is the debt they lay on me and the companions of my day. I would remember now my country's goodliness, make sweet her name. Alas, what shade art thou of sorrow or of blame liftest the lyric leafage from her brow, and pointest a slow finger at her? Shame? V lies, lies, it cannot be, the wars we wage are noble, and our battles still are won by justice for us, ere we lift the gauge, we have not sold our loftiest heritage. The proud republic hath not stooped to cheat and scramble in the marketplace of war, her forehead weareth. Yet its solemn star, here is her witness. This, her perfect son, this delicate and proud New England soul who leads despised seedy men, with just unshackled feet, up the large ways where death and glory meet, to show all peoples that our shame is done, that once more we are clean in spirit whole. V crouched in the sea fog on the moaning sand all night he lay, speaking some simple word from hour to hour to the slow minds that heard, holding each poor life gently in his hand and breathing on the base rejected clay till each dark face shone mystical and grand against the breaking day. And lo, the shard the potter cast away was grown a fiery chalice crystal fine fulfilled of the divine great wine of battle wrath by God's ring finger stirred. Then upward, where the shadowy bastion loomed huge on the mountain in the wet sea light, whence now, and now, infernal flowerage bloomed, bloomed, burst, and scattered down its deadly seed, they swept, and died like freemen on the height, like freemen, and like men of noble breed, and when the battle fell away at night by hasty and contemptuous hands were thrust obscurely in a common grave with him the fair-haired keeper of their love and trust, 
Now Lim doth mingle with dissolved seedy Lim in nature's busy old democracy to flush the mountain laurel when she blows sweet by the southern sea, and heart with crumbled heart climbs in the rose. The untaught hearts with the high heart that knew this mountain fortress for no earthly hold of temporal quarrel, but the bastion old of spiritual wrong, built by an unjust nation sheer and strong, expunable but by a nation's rue and bowing down before that equal shrine by all men held divine, whereof his band and he were the most holy sign. 7 O bitter, bitter shade! Wilt thou not put the scorn and instant tragic question from thine eyes? Do thy dark brows yet crave that swift and angry stave? Unmeet for this desirous morn, that I have striven, striven to evade? Gazing on him, must I not deem they? Heir whose careless lips in street and shop aver is common tidings, deeds to make his cheek flush from the bronze, and his dead throat to speak? Surely some elder singer would arise, whose harp hath leave to threaten and to mourn above this people when they go astray. Is Whitman, the strong spirit? Overworn? Has Whittier put his yearning wrath away? I will not and I dare not yet believe, though furtively the sunlight seems to grieve, and the spring-laden breeze out of the gladdening west is sinister with sounds of nameless battle overseas, though when we turn and question in suspense if these things be indeed after these ways, and what things are to follow after these, our fluent men of place and consequence fumble and fill their mouths with hollow phrase, or for the end all of deep arguments intone their dull commercial liturgies, I dare not yet believe. My ears are shut. I will not hear the thin satiric praise and muffled laughter of our enemies, bidding us never sheathe our valiant sword till we have changed our birthright for a gourd of wild pulse stolen from a barbarian's hut, showing how wise it is to cast away the symbols of our spiritual sway, that so our hands with better ease may wield the driver's whip and grasp the jailer's keys. Eight was it for this our fathers kept the law? This crown shall crown their struggle and their ruth? Are we the eagle nation Milton saw mewing its mighty youth, soon to possess the mountain winds of truth, and be a swift familiar of the sun where I before God's face his trumpets run? Or have we but the talons in the maw, and for the abject likeness of our heart shall some less lordly bird be set apart? Some gross build waiter where the swamps are fat? Some gorger in the sun? Some prowler with the bat? Ix on no. We have not fallen so. We are our father's sons. Let those who lead us know. T was only yesterday sick Cuba's cry came up the tropic wind, now help us, for we die. Then Alabama heard, and rising, pale, to Maine in Idaho shouted a burning word, proud state with proud impassioned state conferred, and at the lifting of a hand sprang forth, east, west, and south, and north, beautiful armies. Oh, by the sweet blood and young shed on the awful hill slope at San Juan, by the unforgotten names of eager, Boys who might have tasted girls' love and been stung with the old mystic joys and starry griefs, now the spring nights come on, but that the heart of youth is generous, we charge you, ye who lead us, breathe on their chivalry no hint of stain. Turn not their new world victories to gain. One least leaf plucked for chaffer from the bays of their dear praise, one jot of their pure conquest put to hire, the implacable republic will require, with clamor, in the glare and gaze of noon, or subtly, coming as a thief at night, but surely, very surely, slow or soon that insult deep we deeply will requite. Tempt not our weakness, our cupidity, for save we let the island men go free, those baffled and delaureled ghosts will curse us from the lamentable coasts where walk the frustrate dead. The cup of trembling shall be drained quite, eaten the sour bread of astonishment, with ashes of the hearth shall be made white our hair, and wailing shall be in the tent. Then on your guiltier head shall our intolerable self-disdain wreak suddenly its anger and its pain. For manifest in that disastrous light we shall discern the right and do it, tardily. O ye who lead, take heed. Blindness we may forgive, but baseness we will smite. 1900.